All right, good evening. We're about to get started. We're about to get started. Please, while we're waiting, go ahead and share this. Go ahead and uh, invite others to come and hang out with us. We're going to begin in just a moment. We welcome you to our broadcast for tonight. So excited about it. So we're going to get started in just a minute. You have about one more minute before we pray. We start at 830. This is a different life. Learning how. Starting now. This is our Thursday night cyber study at the Life Center. The Life Center is a cyber community of Christ followers. And so we're so excited about you joining us tonight. Get your new paper, get your pen, get your notebook, get your Bible. Let's get started. God, we thank you. We celebrate you. We praise you for another opportunity to gather together to study your word. We simply just ask that you empower us, that you fill us, that you uh, dwell, that you rest in this lesson as we deal with topics that may be uncomfortable. And God, we pray for deliverance through the tough deciphering of your word. We pray a blessing over everyone that's watching us and that we'll tune in and that we'll share and watch later. God, will you keep your blood on them? Keep them protected and covered. It's in your son Jesus name we pray. Amen. All right. Listen, I thank you for being on. Uh, As you're coming on, please don't be afraid to let us know uh, where you're coming from, where you're located. And we're going to get started. This is A Different Life, Learning How, Starting Now, sponsored by the Life Center, a cyber community of Christ followers. This is our Thursday night study, and we are beginning a new series today. We're beginning a new series today. Our series beginning today, this is a a post-passion week. This is a post-resurrection series entitled, I'm Fighting for My Family. Seeking stability in a season of stay at home. Seeking stability in a season of stay at home. And let me tell you the reason for this. The reason for this is because if you don't know and you haven't seen the latest statistics, um, because of this stay at home shelter in place, uh, there has been an increase in the number of of CDV, of criminal domestic violence cases, as well as protection orders. So even though for some of us, it seems great to be at home, the reality is many times shelter in place puts us in situations where we're housed with our abuser, whether it be spousal abuse, whether it be um, um, parental abuse, whether it be just familial abuse. And and, and also, in the other side of that, the other danger of that is families that spend so much of time apart because the parents are working, the children are in school, are now forced to be together, to be together. And they're learning things about themselves that they didn't know before. They're learning things about themselves that they might not even like. And they're learning this and they can't leave. So they're stuck. I mean, you know, um, uh, Bishop John Gunn was talking the other day about the fact that he's already heard that there are couples that are deciding to divorce. But because of stay at home and shelter in place, they've just migrated to opposite sides of the house. They've, They've left and gone to opposite sides of the house just waiting for this corona to be over. But the reality is maybe there is a need. In fact, I'm sure there is a need to do some fighting for your family, not with your family in this season of stay at home. So so we're going to be dealing the next three or four weeks. In fact, 
this series is going to run until Mother's Day. And we're going to be dealing with this. I'm fighting for my family for the next few weeks. So today we're going to kick it off. We're going to kick it off. And so if you have your Bibles, let's just go real quickly to the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter one, Genesis chapter one. And we're going to look at verses Genesis, sorry, Genesis chapter seven. I was saying that Genesis is the first book of the Bible, but we're going to chapter seven, Genesis chapter seven. And we're going to look at a few verses in chapter seven and a few verses in chapter eight. Genesis chapter seven, right? So let's look at this. It says, then the Lord said to Noah, come into the ark, you and all of your household, because I've seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. Verse seven says, so Noah with his sons, his wife and his son's wives went into the ark because of the waters of the flood. Flip over to chapter eight. Chapter eight, verse 15 says, then God spoke to Noah saying, go out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and your son's wives with you. All right. In case you missed it, chapter seven, they go into the ark, Noah, his wife his sons and his son's wives. Chapter eight, they came come out of the ark. Noah, his wife, his sons and his son's wives. So today I just wanna teach from this simple thought, we're coming out of this together. We're coming out of this together. I've already told you the alarming statistics that are that are raging and every time you watch the news if you can make it past all the COVID-19 news you can find also woven in there stories about the struggles of families that are being faced in this shelter in place but Noah gives us a picture of what it looks like to be socially distant physically distant from everything sheltered in place for an extended period of time, yet be able to survive the storm. That They're able to not only go in the boat together, but they also come out of the boat together. And so we're asking Noah, what, 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 how does my family, how does my family come out of this together? How do we come out of this together? Well, 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 the first way you come out of this together is we must make a commitment on the front end to endure the condition. We, we must make a commitment on the front end. It's right there in verse number one. It says, so the Lord said to Noah, come into the ark, you, your household, because you've seen the righteousness before me. And then verse number seven says, so they went into the ark. Now, you have to understand that, that between verse 1 and verse 7, I encourage you to read it when you have some time, God tells him that from the time I tell you to go, you have seven days to get the animals in and to get inside the boat before I shut the door. You have seven days. You have seven days to commit to deciding that you want to endure this process of staying on the boat. Why? Because after the seven days, and I shut the door, it's going to be too late to get off. Okay. So, so, so the reality is we had to make a decision when the order was placed to make sure whoever was in the house was going to be the people that come out of the house together. Um, it, it, it requires commitment. Uh -huh. In other words, you must be, we must be committed to ensuring that while we're home, we're going to do whatever it takes to survive this together, which means we have to put ourselves on the back burner because when we're staying at home and deciding to come out of this, the key word is together we have to think about what's best for us, which sometimes means we can't worry about what's best for me. In other words, my individual is trumped by community. So whatever it takes to survive this collectively is what really matters. Um, 
Ah, ah, okay, okay. Um, so, 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 so in my house, um, we, we have to decide that sometimes I can't watch what I want to watch if it means that the family is uncomfortable because I'd rather have them in the room watching with me while they're awake than being dispersed all over the apartment. So that means I got to conform. And that's okay. It means I've learned to watch the cooking channel. I can't cook, but I'm watching the channel. I've learned to watch HDTV. I even decided I might get a hammer when I get out of here. Why? Because I'm learning to be communal instead of individual because I have to make the commitment to on the front end to survive this, right? Um, here's, here's the second thing. In, in order to come out together, we must conform our practices to the current conditions. We must conform our practices to the current conditions. In other words, we must adjust. See, you got to remember, before this, Noah and his family lived out on the land. Uh, this is an agrarian culture, so they probably uh, uh, had flocked. They probably uh, um, had had uh, 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 gardens, but now they're in the boat. And in order to survive the boat, you can't live like you lived out before the boat because the accoutrements of normal society have changed. Ah, see, see. In order to survive this, in order to come out together, you, you're, you're gonna have to conform to some, some practices. You're, you're gonna have to start cooking because you can't go out every day. And if you go out every day, you run the risk of bringing back in what should have been left out. You're gonna have to learn to cook. You, you, you're, gonna, you're gonna have to learn to, to, to eat all the stuff before you go out. You can't take trips. I was talking to my mom, my dad the other day. And they were talking about the fact they thawed out something, some shrimp out the refrigerator to cook with some rice and some 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 cans of tomato. They said, because because we're not going shopping until next week and we're not going to go shopping just to go. We're going to go shopping because we need to restock because we've emptied out one of our favorite restaurants up here called Sunnybrook. Uh, we like to order the whole wing. You know, you get a whole wing for a dollar and some change. But they said, no, we only got the wingettes. I said, why you only got the wingettes? They said, because we're not going to allow food to go bad before. So we're going to empty out all of our freezers before we do an order. Because in this season, we can't just go like we want to. You're, you're going to have to change some things. You're, you're going to have to conform. It's about flexibility. You're not going to be able to do things the way you did without putting people at risk. Did you watch the news today? If you watch the news today, it talked about the dangers of just visiting one person. I know you like to go out. I know you like to see people. But in this season to keep your family safe, did, did you hear the mayor of Memphis? The mayor of Memphis said it, said it plainly. I can't repeat it because we're, well, I mean, I can because this is you know, my show. But to quote him, he said, just stay your ass at home. Why did he say that? Because he said, every time you go out, you put my family at risk. And every time you put my family at risk, the reality is you then put me at risk. Oh, man. So, so the reality is we got to conform. We got to change some of our current practices. It may not be comfortable, but I'd rather be uncomfortable and alive coming out than, than comfortable and putting everybody at risk so that I come out by myself or they come out without me. Oh, God. Here's the third thing. We must learn to be caretakers of our contents. This, this is major. And you're not going to find necessarily a scripture about it, but you got to remember who's on the boat. He's on the boat with his family plus every living thing Seven of every living thing, right? So, oh, catch this. He now has to care for them because everybody that's on the boat comes off the boat. Oh, God. Catch this. Um, it doesn't say he was a caretaker of animals prior to assuming this role. 
but he learned the skill while on the boat. And maybe one way to occupy your time while you're caught in this calamity is to learn or hone some of your skills. Maybe it's a time to develop some stuff because part of your developing, part of what you need to do to ensure you come out is to make sure that everyone in with you is cared for. So maybe part of your adjustment is, I know you don't like to do it, but maybe you're going to have to wash the dishes. Maybe you're going to have to do the laundry. Maybe you're going to have to learn how to sew some socks, replace some buttons. Maybe you're going to have to learn how to edge your partner up, how how to, to, to do a pedicure or manicure. Because remember, those things aren't essential. And if you don't want the person laying beside you heal to start stripping the thread from the sheet, you may have to learn how to do a pedicure. I know you don't like to do it, but you must learn to, in order to come out together, how to be a caretaker of our contents. The contents is not just the people. It's also the things you must learn how to care. Hold, hold on, Josh. You're not going to do me on this. Uh, uh-uh. uh. Hold on. I can't find the lever to make. Oh, there we go. Mm-mm, it's not working. Hold on. I'm not going to be. Anyway. Um. You're, um, you, you have to learn to be a caretaker. In this season, we have to be caretakers. We have to be consciously concerned with everything in our house. It's not by accident that God has allowed us to be in the house together. It's not by accident that God has allowed us to spend so much time in the house. I've been talking about this the whole time. The reality is um, we must be able to steward what's in the house, which means there may be some things we've overlooked while in the house that we need to spend particular time. We we must spend particular time developing in the house. Why? My stuff looks smaller. I look taller now. Why? Because we've overlooked it because we've been so busy with the world. Our schedules have been so busy running about, but now God has reset us in place and we need to spend some time while in place, really nurturing and developing some of the things that's right here in the house. Man, Uh, there there are some, some gifts your daughter or your son may have that that, that you didn't even know about. They, th- this is a time you, you have been so busy, you haven't been able to read to them at night. This is a time where you can read to them in the middle of the day. Th- this is a time you can find out their favorite TV shows. Uh, one of the things I've liked before I got the negative report about TikTok is the fact that families were getting together and doing TikTok videos. But you know what? You don't need TikTok to do it. Just use your computer. Just use your camera and record videos together. I like it, Chastity. Take care of the to-do list. Check off some of the stuff you've been needing to do. You know what, Let me. can I tell you? You should not come out of this with your toilet still running uncontrollably. You, you should not come out of this with your baseboard still dirty. You should not come out of this with filth on your, on your blinds. You should not come out of this with stains still in your microwave. You you should not come out of this with your closet unorganized. You should not come out of this with stains still on your carpet. There is some caretaking that you need to do on the contents of where you're staying in order to come out of this alive, 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 alive. Um, Here's the next thing. And Josh, I love you because, you know, you, Josh is my former student from Toledo who now lives in Texas. He, he, he was one of my students my first year at Calvin and Woodward High School. And he's grown up to be such an amazing man with an amazing family. And he's just amazing. And I'm so proud of him. Man, I'm so proud of him. Wanda, Wanda says Dollar General nails and some glue box perms. Hello, baseboard still dirty. Oh, yeah. Wanted to go get them baseboards done. Get them baseboards done. All right. Here's the next thing, because this is all about development, right? We're fighting for our families. We do not want our families to fall apart. Now, understand, 
understand. Um, wow, you in Colorado? We're going to talk. Um, understand that in the midst of all of this climate, right? This may not just be, this may also be a time for you to rediscover your family. If you've been on edge, if you've been too busy to make time, I know you can't go out, but this is probably when cheap dates are acceptable. Just well thought out dates. Oh man. Oh man. Listen. Oh man. Oh man. I'm getting excited. So, so yeah, you can't do Ruth Chris, even though they did get a whole big bunch of that, um, 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 bailout money, but you can use a candle on the dinner table and cook a meal and turn the lights down and play some music you ain't listened to in a while that's been on your playlist and, and just enjoy each other. You know, um, this is the season to do it. Here's the next thing. Cause I don't want to stay there. Ah, it goes right along with it, though. We must be concerned about the countenance of those also in containment. Catch this, because it doesn't say it, but you have to understand, you have to understand that they were on the boat for 40 days and 40 nights of rain, then another 150 days of the water just settling, right? And they're not used to being contained together. Okay, okay. Um, um, catch this. Oh, you saying you clean some baseboard? All right. If y'all need Wanda, she can't come right now because it's social distancing. But um, she got your baseboards covered. But but catch this. Um, they're in a boat together. You got a a husband, a wife, the husband and wives three sons and the three sons' wives. So you got in-laws in the boat and you got strange animals that they don't know nothing about in the boat. Do you know how easy it is to go crazy when you're staying at home and stuck at home and, and sheltered in place with people that you don't normally con converse with, you don't normally um, uh, have conversation with you may not even get along with now you're stuck in the house bored in the house and you're in the house bored now, now you're having so you got to do check-ins you, you got to check in my, my son's with us he's home from school he came home for spring break but never got to go back um, came home with just spring break attire and has been here his stuff is still in Ohio and every now and then we just got to check on him because listen, he, he was not intending. He's he's not only having to now do courses online, he's now having to miss his friends who he would normally hang out with. He's having to do prog projects for architecture, not in the architecture lab where he has to be the ability to bounce ideas off of his cohort members, but he's in a room with some tape and some cardboard boxes, not all the accoutrements of a lab. I need to check on him and see just how he's doing. Um, we, I, my granddaughter was born two days ago and I haven't even been able to get to South Carolina to see her. I, I've had family members die, you know? So, so all of the weight is going on with the individual members. And if we're not careful, we'll become so self-absorbed about our own issues that we won't check on how the other people in the house are doing. Even my dog has changed. I mean, Angel. Angel ain't used to us being home all the day, all day. And now everywhere she looks, she wants to go stretch out. We're there. Every time, you know, she wants to have the run of the house. But she can't because everywhere she goes, we're right there. And she's so busy, concerned about us, she can't rest. Because every time we move, she thinks we're about to cook. So she's trying to get some food. See? Yeah. Yeah. See? Yeah. So, so you have to take time to care about the people who are in the house because it's not just about you. Just like you about to go out of your mind, can you imagine they're probably about to go? They're not used to you being home all the time. And every time they look up, you there. You eating. You complaining. You watching the show they don't even watch. You making noise. They, they're not used to that. So, so, I mean, the reality is 
all of us are adjusting. So in the midst of that, we must be concerned about the countenance of those also in containment. How, how do we come out of this alive? Here's number five. We must consider how things are going to change. We got to start talking about that kind of stuff now. Look, look at what verse 21 says. Chapter seven it says, all the flesh died that moved on the earth. Birds and cattle, beasts and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, every man, all in whose nostrils was the breath of the spirit of life and all that was on the dry land died. So he destroyed all the living things that were on the face of the ground, both man and cattle, creeping things, birds of the air. They were destroyed from the earth. Only Noah and those who were with him in the ark remained alive. Catch this. While they were sheltered in place, everything around them outside of the boat died. How different was life going to be? All living plants died. They were going to have to start from scratch on the other side. How different is life going to look when we come out of this? P part of what we need to be doing while we're in place is being able to talk about how things are going to change. See, Wanda's going to miss a graduation and a 50th birthday party. Things are going to change. Hey, Josh had to change the playroom into a classroom, and he's teaching a five, a four, a, and a 3K grade. He's a teacher. Look at Josh. I'm proud of him, right? So, so everything is changing. How is your life going to change on the other side of this? How is your relationship with those in the house going to change? Because some of the stuff we can't control out there, but we can control those in the house. So how is our relationship going to change? How are we going to be able to make the most of this time? Hold on. Because the other side of that is what happens if we come out and all of a sudden we distance ourselves and it causes tension because we're so used to being together the last two months. And now we start acting funny when we can get free. No. You got to start talking about the expectations of what you want on the other side of this coming out. What, what are we going to be able to launch together? How, how are our finances going to be? Now that we're cooking and not going out, how can we adjust our budget? You know, how, 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 how can we cook dinners together? I mean, what can we do differently coming out? How are things going to change? See, one thing that's changed in our budget is our gas. Since we don't go nowhere, we're keeping full. I think we only put gas in the car one time. How is that going to change when we come out of this? What are we going to need to do to adjust? These things must be considered now, right? So, so, so the crazy thing is we're, we're doing all this, right? They're, they're, they're stuck on the boat and everything is changing. Now, let's be real. Catch this. Noah's parents are dying. Siblings have died. His wife's siblings have died. All while he's been contained. How is he going to be able to grieve properly when he comes out? That's what a lot of us are facing. There's death that's happening that we can't celebrate. Now, we have the ability of virtual home goings, but they didn't have that. And, and some of us don't even know. And we haven't been able to get in touch with. And so now we're going through how is that going to look on the other side? When we get out and we go back to normal, yet the people who were part of our lives when we went in are not part of our lives when we come out, how do we deal with that? Because I still have the key to my uncle's house. Because when I went in, he was with us. But when I come out, he's no longer here. So how do we deal with those kind of changes? Mm. Here, here's the next thing. We can't allow extended time to create challenges. Let's look back at chapter 7, verse number 17. It says, now the flood was on the earth for 40 days. The water increased and lifted up the ark, and it rose high above the earth. But in verse 24, it says, and the water prevailed on the earth 150 days. Hold on. 
Because what happens when you think it's over after 40 days, but the water doesn't recede for another 150 days? What, what happens when you think it's only supposed to be two weeks, and then all of a sudden, the state, the governor says, we're going to shut the schools down for the remainder of the year, right? What, what, what happens when you think it's supposed to be over, your restaurant just closed for two weeks, you work there, and now they've closed completely and don't even know if they're opening back up again. So, so, so when these extended times come, we can't allow them to create new challenges. We have to trust the God of the flood and not be so consumed with the flood. Ah, that's good. So, so we have to be able to trust the God of the pandemic and not be so confused or frustrated with the pandemic. Because as long as we trust the God of the pandemic, then we trust that the God of the pandemic is also the God who is our shepherd and we shall not want. Mm. here's number seven because because i got to get out of here if we do this right we can count on coming out on top oh this 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 blessed my life it's probably my favorite verse in this whole story then the ark rested in the seventh month and the 17th day of the month on the mountains of Ariat. catch this it started in the valley but by the time the flood was over, by the time the storm was over, it had been lifted to the mountain. Catch this. So they started in the valley, but when they come out of the boat, they come out on the mountain. Ah, you need to understand that if we successfully shelter in place, if we successfully get our families right, if we successfully nurture and develop the contents of our house, we will come out on top. We'll come out better than we went in. We'll come out closer than we went in. We'll come out with a plan that's stronger and will lead to success when we come out. Oh, man, we come out. Why? Better because we endured successfully in the middle of the storm. So if we work on it now, we'll come out on top. Use these time. Listen, if you just walk with your family every day, and, and prepare healthy meals, you'll come out 10 pounds, 20 pounds lighter. That's my prayer. Hey, I'm feeling that thing. I just got to start walking. Hey, I feel it. Okay. See, so, so, so the reality is you have to do it right now. So when the storm is over, you will find yourself in better footing with a better perspective than you had coming in. Oh, man. Ooh. Okay. I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here. Here's the next to the last thing. So, so the question is, of course, um, how do we come out together? Number eight, we come out celebrating God. Verse 18 of chapter eight says this. So Noah went out and his sons and his wife and his son's wife with him. Every animal, every creeping thing, every bird and whatever creeps on earth, according to their families, went out of the ark. And Noah built an ark altar to the Lord and took every clean animal and every clean bird of every clean animal and every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. Now you got to catch this. Oh man. Cause you, if you don't catch this, it, it, this is a whole nother story. God, but I, I got to just say this. So, so catch this. So, so when they were letting clean animals in, they took in seven. Oh God, I'm trying not to run. They took in seven on the front end. We read that earlier. They took in seven animals on the front end of the flood. <laughs> oh, God. Um, when they got on the other side of the flood, those seven animals came out. Then Noah took one of each of the animals and um, slayed them. Okay, okay. Oh, God. Okay, okay, okay. So, so let me show you a big picture, right? Um, they went in with seven, they came out with seven, but he killed one of the seven, which means they had how many left? Six, okay, they had six left. And, and if he killed the right one, that means they came out with three pairs, male and female, to procreate and reproduce, oh God, okay. But God knew this 
on the front end, so he told him to take seven because he knew on the front end that they would come out on the back end and be able to build an altar. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Okay. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Okay. You, you with me? So because God already knew that the storm wasn't going to last always, he already knew that eventually they were going to come out on the other side of the flood. He prepared them in advance to be able to praise them after. Oh, oh God. He prepared them in advance for the praise they were going to have after. Oh, God. Oh, God. He told them what to take because he already knew that if they just endured, if they did what they were supposed to do, they would come out together and the offering was already prepared after for what they was going to have to endure in advance. Oh, God. Oh, my God. You already have what you're going to use to celebrate him on the other side. You already have exactly what you're going to need to give him praise on the other side. It's already been contained in the stuff you have in your shelter in place. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Because I got to close with this. Because this is what really blessed me. And it doesn't say it in the text. But I see it now, and I did it, save the thing. Man, okay, so let me tell you what my last shot is, and I'm done. Here's it, here it is, here it is. Because I believe they learned how to celebrate in crisis, which made their celebration after crisis even greater. Oh, no, that's not it, that's not it. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe that they started celebrating God on the boat so that when they came off the boat and got to celebrate him corporately, it was even a greater celebration. I don't believe they waited to talk to God till the end. I believe that they started talking to God during the process of the boat. And because they could talk to him on the boat, he helped ensure they got off the boat. That's how we're gonna survive together. Don't wait till you get off the boat. Don't wait till you get out the boat to talk to God. If you start talking to God now, he will help you navigate Corona. He'll help you navigate COVID-19. He'll help you navigate stay at home. And you will be sure, sure enough sure, of a mighty celebration when you get out of the house. So just celebrate him now. Talk to him now. Keep in touch with them now and develop the relationships in the house and we will be sure to come out of this together. Let's pray. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the way you make relevant the scriptures for times that we are currently going through. And God, the same way that you allowed Noah to be able to protect his family, please allow those on the line, those who are watching the same knowledge and wherewithal to protect their families through this crisis. God, allow leadership to show its face in the midst of this crisis. Allow those who might have been um, in obscurity to take the forefront in their homes, to guide their homes successfully. Allow them to make the adjustments necessary. Allow them to make decisions collectively, not just based on individual desires, but on the sake or for the sake of everyone in the house. God, give them the wisdom to fight for their families and to seek that stability needed in this season of stay at home. God, we're rebuking divorce. We're rebuking abuse. We're rebuking criminal domestic violence. We're rebuking protection orders. God, we're rebuking any spirit of demonic attack that could come against the family while they're in the four walls. God, we bind all of that negativity in the name of Jesus, God. We, we plead the blood right now over everyone, God. We, we're praying your special protection over those that are watching while cowering in the corner 
because they don't know what's going to happen after the broadcast. God, we're praying that you work on the hearts of abusers right now, God, that you rework them and allow them to to be have renewed eyes and renewed feelings for their loved ones so that they no longer want to hurt them, but only want to help and hold and love them, God. And we pray this time of self-quarantine will not only work on physical health, but it'll work on the mental health and the relational help, health of the couples and families that are in containment together. God, we're speaking blessings and, and we're rebuking depression and we're rebuking mental uh, thoughts of, of suicide and we're rebuking anything negative, God. God, we're releasing joy. We're releasing and loosing peace, God. We're, we're loosing love and we're loosing um, um, renewal of relationships, God. We're, we're releasing happiness, God. We're releasing laughter and, 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 and game night, God. We're releasing opportunities for families to get closer, God. We love you. We praise you. We celebrate you. In the mighty name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, listen, listen. I, I thank you. I thank you for, for joining us. And, and I, I just thank you for joining and taking time out to watch this. Um, I can't uh, stop without offering salvation and restoration. So if there's anyone watching who, who feels God is telling them that it's time for them to submit, to give their life to Christ, it's time for them to give their life to Christ and 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 confess Christ as their savior just inbox me uh TLC cyber on Facebook or email me at the life center cyber at gmail.com um if if you need uh to give your life back to Christ if you were once committed to him but because of whatever reason you've strayed away and you feel God leading you back then inbox me or email me. If you want prayer, just inbox me or email me. If you are looking for a church home, even in Colorado, I have friends there. So if you need a church in Colorado, if you need a church in South Carolina, wherever you're watching from, inbox me and I will direct you to a church. I will direct you. If you want to, excuse me, if you want to, um, Get connected to the Life Center. You can simply go to our Facebook page and hit um, sign up or more information, and it will allow you to fill out a form, and you can be connected to us at the Life Center. Um, listen, we we love you, and um, we want to thank you for joining us. If by chance this message has added value to your life, and you want to connect to us through contribution, if you want to connect to us through contribution, if you want to sow into the life and ministry of the Life Center. You simply can do so by um, like by going to the Life Center on Givelify. Um, you can um, go to uh, PayPal and do TLC Cyber or Cash App TLC Cyber. All of these methods are available to you. All of these methods are available if you want to sow. This is a perfect time to sow seed. God is watching who's sowing now, and he will honor them. He will honor them. So again, listen, we're going to be spending the next few weeks really spending time working on family, fighting for the family, because it is our intention to not have any family come out worse than they went in. We want families to be stronger because Families are being silently attacked during this season. This, this, this financial crisis, this, this educational crisis, even though it's major, this health crisis, it all impacts the family. And so we have to be intentional in leading the charge as the church to fight for this first institution God put in place. Before there was a church, there was family. And we have to make sure as the church that we make sure after Corona is over, the family is still strong. So, so I want you right now, as you share this, as you share this and share it again, even if you shared it before, share it again and share as your title, hashtag fighting for my family. 
fighting for my family. That, that's the hashtag. The hashtag is fighting for my family. And as you share this, let this be the hashtag on every video you share. Fighting for my family. Listen, I love you. We'll be back on Sunday evening at 6.30 for the Life Center Live. Y'all be blessed. Stay at home. Stay safe. And start working on renewing the love in the house you're in. To God be the glory.